Welcome to Chakra Chats with Patty Kikos. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to introduce you to the very beautiful Natalie Southgate. Hi, Natalie. Hello, Patty. <gasps> Chakra Chats <laughs> was founded in London in 1998 by Sydney born Natalie Southgate, who combined her training and expertise in dance, psychology, and in chakra healing to create this new fusion of ancient wisdoms. Natalie refined her classes and workshops in London for three years before moving back to Sydney in 2001. Natalie had always been drawn to the power of chakras through her work as a trained healer. By 1998, she was also studying union psychology at the Society for Analytical Psychology and Healing. She continued to let her interests guide her and in the process, she rediscovered her joy in dance. She had actually studied and practiced dance throughout her childhood. This led her to connect now to alternative and shamanic dance. Ultimately, she headed to Paris from London to take a course in spontaneous dance therapy. This experience led Natalie into the realization that a person can find another way to enter a deeper relationship with the chakras. She had already begun co-teaching a beginner's healing workshop on the chakras, but she felt she had discovered a method to experience what can't be taught, and this experience could be felt by anyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Today, chakra dance is welcomed as a wonderfully healing dance practice wherever it goes. So as Natalie says, we continue to develop new workshops, support our facilitators, create new chakra resonant music and run more trainings. We are expanding rapidly now through Europe and Asia, across the United States, Canada, South America, Africa and wherever the work leads us. If we have learned one thing, it is this. Wherever chakra dance goes, it will feel like coming home. I feel so lucky to have Natalie as part of the Chakra Chat series, specifically because I think she's got so many wonderful tips to share with us regarding the energy center that helps us with our creativity and our flow. Not only does Natalie embody the very beautiful balanced sacral chakra archetype, like the Empress she is, She's also been an inspiration for me during my own journey as a chakra dance teacher. Hello again, Natalie. <laughs> Hello, Paddy. What a lovely introduction. Thank you. Well deserving, well deserving. Thank so, you. Natalie, you and I have bonded in the online work, and of course, yeah. we've got our connection via our mutual love of the chakras. Yes. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your life before you moved to London and lived there? Of course, it was a long time ago. <laughs> I was uh, I was quite young when I went to London. I was only twenty when I moved to London, but before that, I was um, I started my working life in advertising. So a very wow. different, very different path. But and I wasn't I wasn't brought up with um, you know knowing anything about the chakras. In fact, when I first heard about the chakras. My first thought was, why didn't I learn this in school? Yes. You know, why, why yes. didn't I learn this earlier? Yes. Um, so, I, but I somehow became very interested. I think I was about 17 when I did my first Reiki course, mm -hmm. which was 20 years ago. So back then it wasn't as out there as it is now. You mm -hmm. know, I was, my friends were sort of sneaking out to go and get drunk and I was sneaking out to go and do a Reiki course because yeah. I could feel, what is this? You know, and I started doing meditation, but I was so young and I didn't have a lot of um, a lot of guidance I guess yeah. um, no real mentors in this kind of work and it scared me a little bit to start mm. with so I kind of shut the whole thing down mm -hmm. and went off into advertising and then what did I you do in advertising I was in production I worked my first job was in a publishing company and then I worked for David Jones when they had their advertising department in-house so in wow. the David Jones Elizabeth Street store we're up, up on floor seven there doing production yeah wow. so very different world um, and then I thought I'd do the typical Australian thing and go backpacking around Europe for three months yes um, so which I think so many of us do and uh, my three months turned into 12 years I came home 12 years wow. late <laughs> oh so. wow and is this when you were 20 I was 20. Yeah, wow. I came back at 32. Yeah, That is incredible. Yeah. I did the same thing, but I was only gone for two years. I said I'd go for five months and then I'd come yes. back to um, attend my uh, social work graduation ceremony. And then I thought there's yeah. no way I'm coming back for that. Yeah. So I came back two <laughs> years later, but you came back 12 years 12 later. 12 years, I know. Wow. My poor mom. <laughs> wow. Did she come to visit you? 
A lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I came backwards and forwards. I think it was just such, I was meant to be there. You know, yeah. I learned so much in those 12 years. I think it really, you know, it fueled me. It, it gave me everything I needed to, to go in the path that I was meant to go in. So I think yeah. I really needed to be there. I struggled with aspects of it, but, you know, it's such a, an amazing place to live. Mm, especially when um, you're that young and you've got that yeah. adventurous spirit. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And back in those days, you could get charter flights for like $18 and go to Portugal for the weekend. Oh, well, that's what you did. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) It was wonderful. And there was no internet and Mm. no mobile phones or any of that. Mm. So I think the beauty of it for me was being able to just that freedom of yeah. going going I'd make the phone call home once a week every Sunday night, but just to have that freedom to really explore who I was, mm-hmm. you know. Um, was was amazing yeah and did you Um, still work in advertising for most of those 12 years no I didn't I started um, I started in advertising over there and I probably worked there in advertising for about three years Um, and then I started a recruitment company of all things um, so you didn't work somewhere you actually started your own company oh yeah I started that's very entrepreneurial of you at such a young age I've always had a bit of that I think I was 24 actually when Mm -hmm. I started my company again it was that desire to um to help people I think that's always been something that's been within me so Mm -hmm. I fell I just sort of fell into recruitment but recruiting for the advertising industry Mm -hmm. but um it was it was one of those things where um I loved it but I started to feel this call towards back towards the original Mm. you know meditation I can always remember there was a girl I had a little beautiful little office in Soho in London and down in the floor below there was that was very trendy Oh, it was all very hip and happening, yeah. Um, and in the floor below me, there was a casting studio and there was an amazing girl that worked there. And at 5 o'clock every day, she used to be out the door, you know. And I used to say, where do you go? What do you do? Like, what do you rush off to? And she said, oh, I go to this place. It's, I teach there and it's, it's called the College of Psychic Studies. And I was like, what? <laughs> there is a place called the College of Psychic Studies, you are kidding me. And uh, as much as I was enjoying recruitment, I didn't have that, I just didn't have that thing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I didn't have that passion. It was kind of like, you know, a few years into it, it was like, oh, I just want to get through the day, you know, mm. so I can get off and do something I want to do, like, you know, go and dance or, you know, do something mm. fun. Um, and she led me to this college. And I don't know if you, did you ever go there to the no. College of Psychic Studies? No. no. Oh, my goodness. It's two, over 200 years old and it's this old terrace house in South Kensington, this building. And as I walked in, it was like this feeling. It was like I can still remember it as though it was yesterday. It was this feeling of like I have come home, like I have really come home. And I spent years at the college and I did, I did a lot of it part-time. So I was doing the recruitment company and I was studying, 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 and I studied to be a, a healer mm-hmm. and um, oh, just oh, psychic development, mm-hmm. all sorts of spirit. They had amazing lectures there and different courses and creatively using this and that and the other. And I mean, it, yeah. what they offer is amazing. Um, so, and that's where I started to study the chakras in more oh. detail. And I just became like, okay, this, this is my thing. This is my map. Like, I don't know how I got through life without this. I really mm. don't. And that's when I started teaching there part-time, working in the clinic as a healer part-time, but all the time, you know, doing this recruitment for probably until I was about 30. I sold the recruitment company when I was 30. So I was juggling both worlds, um, which I think a lot of people have to do when you start to move into this world. Very, very much so. 